I said I smoke weed, not crack. What's up, my people and all of my people? You know who it is. It's me, the Nappy Hipster. And this is episode 32 of the Nappy Hippie Podcast. Nappy Hippie. This episode is keep that shit to yourself. Keep that shit to yourself. And of course, I'm going to elaborate. This is what this episode is about. So I have a bad habit of when I have a bright idea, I want to share it with somebody. And it's just like you, people have love for you, but some people have love for you only to the extent, you know, sometimes they only have love for you when you're at a certain level, you know what I'm saying? Like maybe if you are a little bit higher than them in the level, they don't love you as much as they did when you were on the same level as them. And I, if I could, I would quote the Megan Thee Stallion um, song. Still doing broke shit with your broke ass and your broke ass we won't be. But facts though, you know, like, and I experienced that many times in life. And so it's just like, now, like when people ask me like what I got going, I usually elaborate, but now I'm just like, I got some shit going. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just give it the energy that you're knowing what I'm giving, like what I'm, what I'm actually doing, but it's really just, you know, I just know I'm doing something because a lot of people will pray on your downfall and not in the sense of getting on their knees and asking God for you to fail, but, and it just leads into the episode about how, you know, I was reading the four agreements and um, it said that basically like, I, I read, I didn't, I didn't write the quote down and I don't know why I didn't write it down, but basically like people will tarnish your dreams with the things that they put on you. Um, in the reading, I was, uh, I was at the point of where they were talking about how um, our brain is a computer and, you know, the outside, the, you know, people around us, things around us are is the computer virus. And then how, you know, computers work, we realize that it might, it's another software, but not knowing it's a software that's negative to the program rather than to help the program. And so it's just the example they use is about, you know, uh, they said the daughter was singing one day and the mom was stressed. So she told her to shut up. Your voice is ugly. So the daughter went on years without singing ever again because she believed that her singing was ugly. Her voice was ugly because her mother said that years ago. And the thing is with people is that they don't think about the aftermath and the after effects of what they say to you. And that's why you just got to like, you, you just limit to what you say and limit to who you interact with and share your gifts and talents and goals with. And also just being mindful of we're going back to projection, y'all. Like people are going to project. People, people want, like, want you to succeed, but not more than them. A lot of people around you will want you to succeed, but not as not surpassing them with your success, but you know, like do your thing, you know? And so it's just like something as small as like, I say, I said it before, like my hair, you know? And I actually had an interview a few weeks ago and she brought it to my attention how like the negative impact, you know, the negative uh, thoughts on nappy hair, I flipped it and made it to something beautiful and made it to something positive and uplifted, uplifting for our hair. You know what I'm saying? Like, and she had white people here, and it was just like, I'm so I can't control that. I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's kind of like I love that you you turn that into something positive because I don't see nappy as negative, but like you said, sometimes people I think because of what we've experienced growing up, we have a fear that it's going to be passed on to our children. So I've heard some really hurtful things coming from parents because the nappy hippie motto is embrace your nappy hair, and you know our. When I was younger, uh, my mother, she would say, we got white people here and your hair don't, don't stay, uh, it don't, it don't keep the perm, you know what I'm saying? You got nigga hair, you know, she would say shit like that. And I never really like, I, I never really was pressed. I was a boy. <laughs> so I liked my hair being thawed in a ponytail. So I really didn't care those days. She didn't feel like per my shit because she knew the next day it was going to be in the pool. You know what I'm saying? But that could have hurt my feelings and made me hate my hair and I could have grew up and wanted to cut my hair, you know what I'm saying? And stuff like that. But 
I didn't. I actually went natural. You know what I'm saying? I'm the only one out of her household that is natural um, and on that side of my family. And so, I, you know, and then I went natural and then I did the fro, the nappy fro, and then, you know, I got the locks. And um, I even had somebody that was in my life that encouraged me to cut my locks off because they were unhealthy. And um, I could have like that. Could, I could have let that be a computer virus and fucked me up and like, yeah, my hair is ugly. But then I thought about it and I was like, my my whole motto is embrace your nappy hair, and that's not in the beautiful stage. That's in all stages that you embracing your hair and you embracing the process and the progress of you know your hair is just like you got a plant with dead you know leaves you're gonna cut the dead leaves out but you ain't gonna throw the whole plant away you feel me and i always uh use that analogy a plant our hair is a plant the way it grows and it grows out it does all you know it's our hair is a plant and so i just trim my locks like like you would do a plant you would just trim out cut out the uh, the dead locks i mean the dead plants the leaves and that's what I did, you know. I cut about four inches off, and I'm still embracing the process, and I mean the progress in my hair, and just the whole course and growth in my hair. I'm loving my hair, um, but you know, it's just going back to what we were talking about, like people, and then they won't, they don't even think about it. They don't even apologize. They don't be like, I wonder if that fucked her up. Maybe that be that they may they may be their whole goal, the reason why they don't be fucked up about excuse me, apologizing or even going back to what they said to you. And then, you know, people wonder why you get distant or you're aggressive when you talk to them about certain things because it's just like, bro, you hurt my feelings and you don't even care to even speak on it. And so it's just like to avoid that whole situation and having to even elaborate on why you feel the way you feel or, you know, just keep some shit to yourself. Keep your goals to yourself until it rolls out. And when that shit roll out and it's becoming the success you invested in and manifested it to be, they can't put no bad shit on, their name, on your name and on your work. And if they do, you know it's projection. You know it's my shit. You know what I'm saying? So you know how to move about it. You know, like, okay. That's the type of nigga you are. You know what I'm saying? Instead of just getting your feelings and um, like lacking confidence in your talent. Because a nigga, a nigga around you that's probably not even, don't even have the mindset, the capability to achieve things that you've done. You know what I'm saying? They throw salt on your name and your game. You know what I'm saying? But real, recognize real. And so when you realize that, it's easier to go ahead, you know, just go about your business and just know, note it. You know what I'm saying? You a hating ass nigga, you feel me? But sometimes you ain't even got to speak on it. You ain't even got to speak on it. You ain't got to speak on when a nigga hating. Just act accordingly. You know what I'm saying? Then for sure. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't even got nothing to say. Okay, for sure. Because it's tougher to get putting a lot of energy into something that you really don't care for than it is to put in energy that you do care for. You know what I'm saying? That's why I embrace all my listeners and supporters. I embrace y'all more than I acknowledge the niggas that I see or I, I, they be viewing my shit and don't be saying nothing or the comment or liking or nothing. You know, I don't focus on them. They have their own agenda. I'm focusing on the people that's focusing on me. I'm fucking on the people. I'm fucking on the people. I fuck with the people that fuck with me. Because, you know what I'm saying? I love you. What you put out in this world come back to you. So if I'm focusing on the negative, it's going to come right back to me. When I can just focus on what's in front of me and what's making me happy and making me keep going. That's that's the whole thing. So really, just we just keep that shit to ourselves. We... A lot, even our family, bro. Your mama, your, you know what I'm saying? Some people, a lot of people are quitting their job. <laughs> I was watching you people. And uh, she, what was it? Eddie Murphy was like, you quit your do- job to do a podcast? You know what I'm saying? And so it's, <laughs> that's funny. That movie was funny, first off. You people was a good movie. These people be trying to make think pieces. What? The movie was good as fuck. It was good as fuck. Like, I, it was a it was a funny movie. It addressed shit that do be going on. And I'm pretty sure in interracial co- uh, relationships. So I didn't really like people. Twitter is Twitter is how some people, I, I be seeing people, how they be talking about Facebook. Twitter is becoming that. Y'all just be talking because y'all got the Wi-Fi and the bird out. 
You don't be knowing nothing. Y'all don't even be having conversations like this. Y'all just be talking. Y'all don't even care. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I seen a lot of bad tweets about the movie. I watched it last night, bro. Bitch, like, I'm literally over here trying to catch my breath crying laughing. Like, it was really funny. It was a funny movie. But, um, uh, yeah, like, damn, I was getting to something with the podcast shit. Uh, yeah, like, you know, like, I told Grams, I was like, Grams, this is my last year working. Like, I'm not, I'm no longer working for anybody. And she was like, well, make sure you this, and are you sure about this? And are you, you know what I'm saying? And I, I could let that discourage that, you know, the confidence that I have for my brand and myself. I could, I could let that discourage, you know what I'm saying? Discourage me and make me feel like, damn, I, I, she might be right. I might not be ready for this. I might not be able to do it, but no. Instead of focusing on what she said, and, and, and I'm real good at proving motherfuckers wrong. That's, that's how, that's what keep me going. I remember... I remember because I, I I came home with confidence my first year of college and told my mom I've been smoking. She she laughed, we was kicking kicking, and then the next day I I think the fuck not. So do you feel like you're gonna be able to finish college? I said I smoke weed, not crack. Where did you get that from? So I was like, you know what? She don't think I can finish school. So yeah, I my way. Sophomore year, ju my junior year, I was ready to leave because I knew I wasn't going to do nothing with I, I, the, the degree that I got. You know what I'm saying? I was like, I'm going to just head out, you know. But then I was like, no, just because that motherfucker think that I can't do it, I'm going to do it for the fuck of it. You know what I'm saying? And I actually, glad, I'm glad I did. I had a really good experience of the teaching that I did do, the three years that I did teach. Very good experience. I learned a lot about myself and learned a lot about what's going on around me with the younger generation having children. Or my generation having kids, or, you know, like young people having kids at a young age. You know what I'm saying? Like kids having kids. I, I learned a lot about that and the experiences with that and how I learned to keep going. I, I learned to find something to help you keep going because when I realized that the kids do want to learn, they just need to be sure that you're not around just to boss them around, but to actually help them. That's when I started, you know, reaching them. And I was like, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Like these little, even at the toughest school I worked at, like these niggas is actually... They care, they just need somebody to care for them to care. You know what I'm saying? And so, I, I had a really good experience um, in school, uh, working in schools. So, I, I don't regret it, you know what I'm saying? But the only thing I regret is when I stuck on, what, 2018 when I was talking about my brand, I wish I would have ran with it because I had somebody that was on my team. Shout out to Shy. I had somebody that was ready to give me the tools and all that shit, and I just kept talking. But shout out to her for not pressuring me or making me feel like a lame, or you know what I'm saying, because I talked about my brand so long. Because I got to learn a lot, and I'm just understanding the business side and the creative side of owning the brand. So I do appreciate her overall, you know what I'm saying, because she helped me get my ideas out and help me roll out a drop, you know what I'm saying? So shout out to my nigga shot, man. But this is episode 32 of the Nap Baby Podcast. Keep that shit to yourself. When that shit roll out, that's when motherfuckers know you got motion. The thing is, why are you telling people that you got motion that's not even trying to help or promote or support you? So you just talking. You know what I'm saying? You just letting people throw salt on your game and it's not even developed yet. You ain't even reached your full potential, but you talking to motherfuckers that ain't even got no potential or ain't got no motion and they putting you down and you losing all the motion and all the mojo that you already had over people that you probably wouldn't ask for advice for. Stop it. And like I said, these episodes, I'm talking about. And I hope y'all got your weed rolled up. I hope y'all rolled up. I do be forgetting. I do. I ain't been smoking. I do be forgetting, y'all. Please roll your weed. 
Roll your weed. Hit the blank. Reach your goals. Set your goals. I haven't set my goals for the week yet. I'm going to do that after this episode. But set your goals, man. God got you. You got you. If you believe you can do it and you apply that pressure, you're going to get some dollars, baby. So let's do it. 20, 20, 20, 23. 20, 20, 20. Three. Yo, but fuck it. We ball. <laughs> Episode 32 of the Navy Podcast. I'm going to fuck with y'all on Wednesday, man. Write them goals down and let's get to it. Peace. 2020, 2023. Where the fuck am I at? Bitch, time traveling. Because what the fuck? Uh, uh, in 2023, so nothing but celebrations. Clico showers. Not even celebrations. Because we we done talking. I talked for some years. I talked for almost a decade about what I wanted to do in my life. It's going on, what? It's 2023, 2018. That's five years. Five years I talked about my brand. Done talking. Then I got people around me that fuck with me and want me to be great and want to put me on. I'm stopping me at this point if I don't roll this shit up. Nappy Hippie Day is February 9th. DM me for the address. Free entry. Bring your girl. Bring your side chick. Bring her best friends. You can bring your homies too. We vibe it. We vibe it. We're going to have the Hennessy Lemonade. The Hennessy Lemonade video premieres that night. You know I'm going to have Nappy Hippie merch. What the fuck is Nappy Hippie Day without Nappy Hippie merch, baby? Exactly. We're rolling out. We're going to have a drop that night. We're going to have a Nappy Hippie Gems drop that night. But I'm dropping the Nappy Hippie Gems this week. And, I, and I'm manifesting that. So be on the look. www.worldwideweb.nappyhippie.com Be on the lookout. Because Nappy Hippie Gems is going to be ready to be caught. Because I'm dropping. So make sure you catch, you're going to catch these jams every Wednesday and Sunday. Yes, I'm posting this late, but it's better late than never. And that's the thing, though. When you have goals, when you, you take a break, but come back. Clock back in, bitch. Don't quit that motherfucking job. Until, unless you got something else lined up. Clock the fuck back in when you come back from that break. As long as you clock back in, you're still making your money. As long as you tap it back into that idea, the creative, you know, the creative juices are still flowing. Do something with them. You know what I'm saying? And keep that shit to yourself. Until it rolled out, until that juice is, is ready, is ready to go. Until you're ready to pour it into the cup and <sighs> don't tell a motherfucker about it. Let that, let that motherfucker marinate. Until you're ready to roll it out. Because how you, that then you just have a confidence in your talents. You have a confidence in your skills and your consistency that everything is going to come out the way it needs to. And not and not nobody ideas and opinions is, is tarnishing or giving you the lack of confidence in your create creative space, in your creative world. No one can tell you shit. And again, a motherfucker's telling you negative shit is, pro, is, is projection. And they see it in you. And they don't see it in themselves. So instead of spreading the love to you, like, bro, you're really doing this shit. Bro, you high? You high? Like, you think you got that shit on? Instead of saying, nigga, you got that shit on, you clean it fuck. Niggas behave sometimes, and they might be your best friend. I, You know what I'm saying? I had a situation where I told my homeboy, I said, bro, I had somebody that wanted to put me, put me on a song. The verse was so hard, I said, bro, shit. They're not going to want to put me on the song. I literally said that. I sent her the song. She was like, it's straight. Keep practicing it. And then we got into it on social media. And then she didn't put me on the song. I said, that was just her way of saying, you're not getting on my song. <laughs> but this episode 32 of the Navy People Podcast, man. Stay fly. Stay fit. Stay blessed. Keep the love flowing, bro. Because what, what you put out in this motherfucker come back to you. Whether you believe it or not. 
when that bad shit happened, when bad shit happened to me, I always think about what did I do? Like, why did I get hit at a red light again? Cha -ching! But why did I get hit at a red light again? This big ass, these three big ass red light symbols, colors. And I keep getting hit, bro. Like, God, like, you gonna order up this bag. It ain't gonna be the way you want to. What you gonna <laughs> Episode 32 of the Nappy Podcast. I'm gonna fuck with y'all on Wednesday, man. Write them goals down. And let's get to it. Peace. It was some nappy hippie shit. It was some nappy hippie. It was some nappy hippie shit. It was some nappy.